question that I just learned. Now I'm not going to take credit for discovering this at all. This has been around for a while. I just learned it from a colleague of mine and I wanted to share it because I think it's quite helpful in terms of its different applications. So the scenario I'm going to give you is say I have a folder of games and in these games my opposition stats are named per the opposition. So say Duke made two, Duke made three, Duke missed three. Come into the next game, same thing but now it's Purdue. Missed three, Purdue made three, um, same with this game. Now we've got Michigan State made three, Michigan State missed three. If I want to run an output report on all of those games and try and figure out the three-point percentage of my opposition, I'm going to have to script for all of those team names because they change every time. However, I just found this new scripting function that means I don't have to do that. So I'm going to show you that. And what it is, is it's this thing called regular expressions. Now, regular expressions are apparently quite common in other scripting languages. I'm talking to programming friends of mine, this is very common in their field. However, in sports code, I was more familiar with the bespoke sports code scripting. However, this is applicable in sports code as well. So if I open up the inspector window and go to the scripting, I right click. If I go down here, I can tick use regular expression. Now what that's going to do if I right click again, it's just going to stay ticked. It's going to mean it's formatting the script differently. And when I execute the script, it's going to read it differently to a normal sports code script. So let's try and figure out to calculate three point shooting percentage. I'm going to go made threes. So I'm going to go equals instances. Now I'm not going to go count because I'm going to use these um, rows of script for the movies later. So I'm going to go instances where row equals. Now here I'm going to go for something a little bit different than I'll typically go for. So I'm going to go full stop star and then I'm going to go the stat made three. So full stop star then made three. So typically and the rule of thumb with sports code scripting is, is that the labels and the names have got to match exactly what is in the timelines it's reading from. I'm almost going against this here by putting this full stop and star. However, this is relevant to that regular expression scripting function. So I'm going to copy this down, change this to missed, change this to missed. So I've got my made and missed shots. I'm going to create my total by going count made plus count missed because I didn't count anything up here. So now I've got my total. Now if I want to show, let's just go shooting percentage um, instead of the, uh, well we'll do the whole, we'll do the whole shebang. So we'll go now show, we'll go count, it's going to be a long one, so show count made and I'm going to go plus add my divider there plus total. I don't have to go count total because the total has already been counted. I'm going to go plus, add a little divider again, and then I'm going to enter my percentage scripting. I've done percentage scripting quite a few times on this channel, so I'm not going to cover it again here. But count, I don't know why I keep capitalizing that, count, made, divided by total, and then I can go times 100, round to one decimal point and then add a percentage sign. So it's a long way of scripting um, essentially this. So the efficiency, then a little divider, and then the percentage. And then the reason I didn't count up here with these instances is because I'm going to go show, made, or missed. So now when I go to report mode, and I'm going to report on all timelines in a folder, I'm going to select this folder of games, I'm going to get my three point shooting percentage. Now, I already know I messed up here and that it's also going to get my Ohio State made three. So if I'm the home team, it's looped in my Ohio State shots with also the opposition shots. So I've got Ohio State, then I've got Michigan State, Michigan, Purdue, and then Duke at the end here. But I want just the opposition. So I want to get rid of Ohio State from this calculation. So if I go back into this calculation, I'm going to add something in the front of this dot and full stop. I'm going to add a bracket. I'm going to add a question mark, I'm going to add a full stop, and then I'm going to put Ohio State. 
So it's going to exclude all the rows that say Ohio State made three. Same thing, question mark, full stop, Ohio State, and then close that bracket. And now it's going to exclude Ohio State missed threes. So now when I press execute, I'm going to run it on my folder of games again. Now I've got just the opposition missed, uh, made and missed threes. So this is a really unique scripting function, as I said, because it's not matching exactly what's in the timeline. But again, it's only because I've got this regular expression ticked in the scripting. So if I were to untick this, then go into the scripting, this won't work because it's got, not got that ticked. Now, however, if I go back and do click it, it's going to work again. But the main function I just want to throw at you is this dot and full, this full stop and this asterisk combination because I've put it before made three. However, I was to put it afterwards, if I wanted to calculate everything that said, if it was, for example, made three Michigan or made three Duke, it's going to take that made three and then collect any name after the fact. So a good example I've seen of this um, practically is, for example, um, you pulled into a timeline through an XML import a roster, and the roster's got their numbers at the start of their names, say 01, 02, 03. You could put 01 and then full stop star, and it's going to pull the rows of that players who's number one or number two or number three based upon that scripting function. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. Uh, my email's in the description below. But hopefully this was helpful in teaching you a new scripting function that even I'm just learning and exploring as well. So thank you very much and have a good day.